Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Umbrella Academy the board game, but before we begin, please turn on your subtitles to the Klingon channel so that when I have an oops moment, you'll know about it. And you guessed it, everybody. I'm Kimberly, not Rado, but I'm so excited to share this with you. This is the Umbrella Academy the board game. So if you're familiar with the TV show or the comics, you know that these characters are interesting, talented and dynamic and everybody at the table gets to play one of these heroes they get to play somebody from the umbrella academy in this game i am playing space boy and i also have lewis playing rumor and so i've got a two-player game set up here there's all the familiar locations out here on the board in the center you've got the mansion this is where everybody lives and where a lot of the action takes place up here is the moon! That is where Space Boy starts. And you'll notice that I've got Space Boy laying on his back. No, he's not taking a nap. It's just so that you can see from top down um, the figure. So I've got him laid down. He's not tired and he's not KO'd or, or like sleeping or anything. Uh, same thing with Rumor, who's over here in this area, uh, which is the city. This is the uh, city area down here, and we've got downtown in the corner. And then up here is the hospital. You're gonna see the Huxley County General Hospital. Now the locations are important. They're color coded, but they also have really clear marks that show the adjacency. If there's a line between spaces, they're adjacent. Now the cool thing is everyone's adjacent to the mansion. You can always go to the mansion or back as part of your move action. So if you can see right now, I've got my cards splayed out. This is a deck building game and players are going to work together as the Umbrella Academy folks to take on and defeat the hazards that are out everywhere all across the board. And they're also trying to defeat the super villains, Hazel and Cha-Cha. You can't get to Hazel and Cha-Cha though until you get to a bell the middle of this draw deck where there's a save the world card and that card triggers the finale and the finale is just where everything gets wild and crazy and ah you really want to essentially take them down right fantastic i've got hazel and cha-cha right here for their player cards so you know exactly how to defeat them with what kinds of power tokens um Players are going to play their cards. That's gonna be the first phase of each round. Then there's going to be a draw phase. Players are gonna draw back up to the hand limit. In a two player game, it's five. Uh, in other player games, that hand limit goes down. So you get more cards when you're playing uh, with two people, which I kinda of like. Um, after the draw phase, there's gonna be the effect phase. And we're gonna go around the entire board and any remaining hazards take effect, which is why in the turn phase, players are trying to tackle these hazards and try to defeat and destroy the hazard cards so that the bad stuff doesn't happen. And then lastly, there's a crisis phase. And the crisis phase is when we draw cards from here and we put new hazards and advantages out on the board. Advantages help players. They are green. You're gonna see them right here. Um, and hazards obviously try to get in our way. There are a couple ways that we can lose. One of them is by having six or more hazard cards on the board at the end of your turn, at the, the round. So if players take all their turns and you take a look at the board and there are six or more, right now there's one, two, three, four, five, ugh, then you lose. And so it's really, really important to make sure that you are tackling these hazards. Um, if you run out of the deck, you ran out of time. If the deck is, is expended and you haven't defeated the two super villains, Hazel and Cha-Cha, you lose as well. So there's some really dangerous stuff out here, but you get to work together. This is a cooperative game and every player gets a unique deck. And so as Space Boy, my cards are all different. They're unique, they're interesting, and they're specific to Space Boy. Every player is gonna draw two of these feud cards and I'm just gonna show you right now what Space Boy's got. What is Space Boy working with? Space Boy is scared. Space Boy has some phobia. Um, and it says here, this card cannot be discarded or played unless via another card or board ability. 
While this card is in your hand, you may not play advantage cards except to move. Discard this card if it's the only card in your hand. Got to keep an eye on your feud cards, particularly these, these my phobia card. It's going to be a little bit hard to get rid of, but there are some ways for me to do that. Now, it does go in my discard pile, and then I just draw it back up. And so um, it never really goes away, but my phobia kind of crops up and it gets really, you know, intense at certain times, much like I see with a uh, Rumor's sibling rivalry. And so with this sibling rivalry, Rumor deals with this and it can't be discarded or played just like uh, my card for Space Boy. But if you're the first hero in a turn to destroy a hazard or a villain, discard the card. Um, so that means that uh, Rumor's really fighting to be first and fighting to be best, which uh, thematically just fits in so well with this story with the Umbrella Academy. So I'm actually just going to get going. I'm going to play a card on my hand, most likely. Um, there are two ways that your cards actually have effect. So one of them is by looking at this power symbol up here. Um, this is the power lightning bolt symbol. Um, and it is going to be really good because that's what these out here need. There's a power here, there's a pow two power over here in Sugar Rush, and there's one right here in Red Licorice and Armageddon. So if I play this card, I can simply say, in the location where I am, I'm going to place this token. And you take it from the board, and you put it down, and you cover up the thing that you're uh, essentially fighting, right? You've got power. Uh, wits is the uh, light bulb right here. And then the fight is the punch, the punch symbol, right? This is the the uh, fight. So there you got your fight, you got your power, and you got your wits. So this card is particularly hard because it requires all three of those symbols. And you can tell that my card only has one. The other thing you can do with your card is say, I don't want to play it up here. I want to play it down here for the text ability. And this text ability says, choose a player. They must discard their hand, then draw cards equal to the number of cards discarded. Let's say I, this is a player, so it can be yourself, but it can also be um, your fellow um, cooperative player. You can say to them, hey, you're, you didn't draw your cards. You didn't do really well. <laughs> discard as many of them, your, your entire uh, hand, uh, and then draw back up the same number. So playing cards where you are in your location with the text or with the symbol, you can move. Uh, right now, I'm in a pretty good spot, and I think I might want to actually fight. I'm going to take this card. This card says motivation. I am feeling motivated to punch out this particular hazard. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is use it as the punch symbol. I'm going to use that fight. I'm not going to use this one down here, which is really good. But it's also, this is good, and I'm at the moon, and I want to do something while I'm at the moon. So I'm going to play that, and I'm going to take this punch, and I'm simply going to add it to that attack card. So let me show you this under here. So I just took this card, and I just said match my punch. There we go. This hazard is halfway finished. Now, I don't have to finish it in a turn, but I do need to finish it by the end of the round, or I lose my progress. So right now I don't really have too much in my hand that's going to allow me to finish it, but I'm going to hope <laughs> that my friend Rumor is going to come to my aid. So let's take a look at Rumor's cards. Rumor does have a punch, just a simple strike. They've got that right there in their pocket. They could come and fight. Um, but I think... Maybe they might transport. Let's see if I can. Aha, that's what it is. When you're at a location and you don't have any hazards. Now we're looking at rumor here. There are no hazards present and there are advantages. One or multiple. For your turn, you can collect the advantage and add it to your hand. Now, that's great. That, that's what advantage cards do. And that's why you want to keep your hazards down low is so that you can actually collect those. Now, the other thing that happened because of that is a location was revealed. You're not allowed to do the actions at locations on your turn unless all the cards are gone, which means advantage cards and hazards. So now Rumor is able to do this city location, which is discarding a skill card, to place a wits token on any hazard or villain, and a wits is one of those lightning bolt, uh, bulbs. 
So I thought that's that's good. Lightning bulbs, light bulbs, because there's lightning bolts. <laughs> Those are so close. Uh, so a light bulb, right? That's what that's going to be. But that was um, Rumor's turn. That's it. Rumor just took the advantage cards in the space where they were. Now, probably for a reason, this levitator belt says you get to move to any location. And if you discard the card, destroy the card, or use an advantage card, it goes away forever. It's a one-time thing. Your cards go into your discard pile and you, sh you shuffle them up and draw them back. But not the green advantage cards. Okay. So let's see here. I can do, let's, let's see what I can do. Choose a player. They discard their hand. That could be interesting, but I also like what rumor has. Move any hero between the moon and any other location. Ah, this is pretty cool. I think what I might do is use space boys turn. Oh, ooh. Nope, I think I need to use Space Boy's location um, uh, essentially to bring Rumor over. Rumor needs to help him do the attack. So move any hero between the moon and any other location. So let's say I play it. Here's the other location, the city, and here's the moon. So we're going to be moving between those two, whichever direction. Um, and I will... Um, villains don't follow, then draw a card. Ooh, I didn't read the bottom part. I didn't wait for it. I got so excited about moving. So make sure you finish your card. So I'm going to draw this card and add it to my hand. That's a cool way to get more cards. <laughs> Doing the cool text at the bottom of your card. So now that Rumor's out here, Rumor's going to play um, this... Yeah, just a plain old strike. <laughs> this is a skill card. Yes, really helpful skill card, actually. I thought it looked kind of weak, but in the situation, it's actually a really, really strong card. I am seeing the benefits um, incredibly well. Okay, so add the punch. That's what rumor said, add the punch. Oh, okay, so we add the punch, that's the fight. Right? Rumor came over and was like, hey, buddy, I'm here. I know you're like three times my size, but I'm here to help. That means that this hazard is complete. This hazard, the attack happened, the strength was needed, and the players uh, came through. So this card is going to be discarded uh, out of the game. And the reason is because it's a basic card. This is just a regular old run-of-the-mill hazard. They just go, boom, right out of the way. Okay. Now the moon has been revealed. Much like the city, the moon says discard a skill card to place a power token. Power is lightning bolt, okay? On any hazard or villain. I think, uh, I think Space Boy might do that. <laughs> um, that's really, really good. Um, has a card uh, with the lightning bolt on it already, but also has that special ability down there. Oh. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. There we go. Look at this. The sibling rivalry. Rumor said, I want to be the one to punch out the, uh, the hazard, right? So that means that they were the very first hero on a turn, uh, in a turn to destroy a hazard or a villain card. Rumor gets to discard their sibling rivalry. Much like in real life, you kind of like, it just bubbles up and then you kind of, and then it diffuses. Um, so that view card is going to go out of uh, Rumor's current hand because Rumor was the one to bl land the final blow. Really, really good. Um, okay, so we are looking at Space Boy. What is Space Boy up to? I think Space Boy might actually send a lightning bolt down for a, a card. Can't be my phobia. I'm too scared to do anything about that. But it could be... Oh, that acumen is so good. Drawing uh, cards, another player? Mm. Um, maybe. There are very few punches out there right now. There's not too many fights to be had, mostly because Rumor jumped up and took the last punch, even though, um, you know, he could have done it um, on his turn. So Space Boy is going to discard Tough It Out because he's going to take the train action. He's up on the moon training 
and he's going to place a power token out on any hazard. And I think he's going to um, do, let's see here, boy, that lightning bolt over here looks really sugar rush. Now, there has to be another one going out there, but that might, that might uh, work. It might work. Let's see here. Place another card um, at another hero's location and add one of your choice. Okay, I think they can probably take out another card. We'll see if that's the case. Um, discarded, did the action, and put that token out there. Even though he was still on the moon, he was able to shoot out that power. Okay, back up to Rumor. Rumor's going to... While this card is discard... Uh, nope, nope, not do that one. Place a hazard um, at your location on top of the main deck. Not there. And then this, play a card at another hero's location to do a battle. I think he's going to use his Levitator Belt. That's one reason why he picked it up. And I think he's going to um, play it, which means out of the game. Right, just put it in that discard pile. It's gone forever, but he's going to move to any location. So Rumor's going to go whoop and follow right over there to Sugar Rush. Uh, Rumor loves to pick up everybody else's, uh, you know, half-finished tasks and finish them. It seems like it's part of his sibling rivalry. Um, that was it. That's that's the turn. Playing one of those advantage cards, and uh, that's a it allows him to move without. Um, taking extra turns to move because normally moving is not that easy. Okay, um, let's see here. That was rumor. We're back to Space Boy. I think Space Boy might just be ready to give some cards to Rumor so Rumor can continue doing some really, really cool stuff. So he's going to use his tactical acumen choose Rumor to draw two cards. All right, so there we go, playing it for that ability. Rumor's gonna draw another skill card and yet another skill card. We've got some um, playing at another hero's location to place a battle token, so I think Space Boy better kind of get out of there. Maybe he needs to get off the moon so that we can actually start doing some of that really cool stuff. Okay. Then it's back to Rumor. Let's see here. Rumor's going to... Ah. Oh no, Rumor has to play a card at another hero's location to place a battle token of his choice. So he moved over to Sugar Rush thinking that he could draw a lightning bolt or play a symbol. And I just don't know if he can even do that without bringing Space Boy. Oh no, Space Boy can't get off the Space Boy. Oh dear, oh dear. I might be in a pickle. I might be in a real pickle. <sighs> okay. Oh boy. You know what? I'm going to say... <laughs> Knowing I probably wouldn't have made that mistake last turn for my free levitation, I would have moved here. So it's just from the moon to any location. And for Rumor's turn, Rumor's going to pick up the advantage cards in the location where Rumor is. So that's Rumor's turn. We're back to Space Boy. And I think Space Boy is going to use this one um, uh, card to move. Now that's how you can move, is you can essentially discard a skill card and say, I'm moving from any location to the mansion, which is what he's going to do, from the mansion to any other location, which are any of these individual squares, or you can move in between with adjacent spaces. And so this is adjacent in the white area, this is the city, the hospital area, and then these are two separate locations. So now he is left with just his phobia card and it says that um, you discard this card if it's the only card in your hand. So Space Boy is going to discard his phobia. He got rid of that fear for just a little bit. And now as you can see, Space Boy is out of cards. Meanwhile, Rumor has a lot. So players are going to play their cards until they don't want to play anymore and they pass. When you pass, you're out of that particular round. 
um, and you have to go through the entire four phases and then start the new play phase again before you join um, the group. So that means um, that means here that Rumor is going to use some of these cards, and I think perhaps he's going to keep the punch. Um, he's going to keep the uh, strike, the fight card, just in case maybe next turn something happens. Um, and he's going to uh, do this. So play the card at another hero's location to place a battle token of your choice. Right now, um, Space Boy is not really available. So this is just going to be a discard to move to an adjacent space. Do you see that? So you use the cards where you're like, I don't want to use the skill. I don't want to use the text. I'm just going to use it to discard. Okay, now remember... I said the space boy was out. Now this was true, my phobia. This was um, the only card in my hand at that time. However, I have not passed yet as space boy. I can pick up this advantage card. That's, a, that's something I can do on my turn. So I'm gonna pick up the advantage card as space boy and that is space boy's turn. Now here's the cool thing about the mansion. When the mansion is open and free, you can use the Travelator. And the Travelator lets you move to any location and you don't have to pay a skill card. So good to reveal these locations and to be able to do the cool stuff on the board. Now, he might be able to move somewhere, <laughs> but right now with just one punch, I'm not sure that Space Boy can do much. Okay, meanwhile, back at the ranch. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to have uh, Rumor play this Advantage card. It is discarded forever in the um, destroyed pile, but a Lightning Bolt is added to Sugar Rush. Let's take a look at this a little bit closer. We've got that first one. Now we've got the second one. That card has been defeated. We're going to take these off, put them back in the pile, and cool thing, <laughs> maybe not for players, this is a Hazel and Cha-Cha card. Hazel and Cha-Cha cards don't get destroyed until it's finale time. So that card is gonna go at the bottom of the deck. Now let me show you, this is the super villain explanation. So it says, each time a Hazel and Cha-Cha hazard, which is what I just defeated, is destroyed, place it onto the bottom of the main deck. Hazel and Cha-Cha cannot be destroyed until the finale. So I've got Hazel and Cha-Cha here and here. They were randomly uh, placed here at the very beginning of the game by just a die roll. And they are going to essentially be in these locations so that I can fight them. But I can't fight them, again, until I get to that uh, finale trigger. But they do have these uh, requirements. And when you fight one, let's say I go after Cha-Cha and I'm able to put in one round uh, one of the power and two of the fights. I then flip Cha-Cha over and now Cha-Cha has to be fought again because I just wounded Cha-Cha. I didn't kill Cha-Cha. And now it requires even more symbols to defeat Cha-Cha. So they are a two-phase uh, villain killing situation. <laughs> okay, so that was here. Back to Space Boy. Space Boy is in the mansion. Space Boy can move anywhere Space Boy wants. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Space was going to move over here. <laughs> and that was free. That was using the Travelator. As you can see, I'm trying to nab up the Advantage cards. Advantage cards don't count towards your hand limit at the end of the round when you have to uh, draw up to five. So keeping these green cards, these Advantage cards, over into the next round means you're that much more powerful. Yes, Space Boy's turn continues to happen. It's kind of amazing how you think you're done and then you just keep finding all these opportunities to do certain moves, to mobilize, and to attack the hazards. All right, so looks like Rumor's got a punch. It looks like Rumor's got some hidden costs. When the card is discarded, discard the top card of your deck. Interesting. You can just discard cards too, by the way, as long as they don't say you have to discard them. Um, I heard a rumor that was playing it at the same location as a hero and then um, place a hazard 
um, at your location on the top of the deck face down. That could be really helpful in later rounds when you have too many hazards on the board and you don't want to trigger the end of the game, which in, ends in a fail. If you have six uh, of these hazards flipped over face up um, by the time you get to the end of the player turn. So I think there might be an opportunity to, yeah, you know what? I think I might be able to, as a team, go down here and take care of this hazard card this turn. Now let me show you how that works. <laughs> let me see if I can do it. Um, I think I'm gonna play this card to move. Rumor is going to move from this location to the mansion, right? That's how you get to the, the mansion is like this hub and from the mansion you can go anywhere. And so next turn, Rumor is going to be able to move to any location using the Travelator and not one of his cards. So now I'm going to nab up this card. This is my um, grab advantage cards as long as there are no hazards in the space. And I'm going to add that Levitator Belt to Space Boy's um, hand. Pretty fast. I'm going to use the mansion's ability, the Travelator, to pop down here and move to this. This is a come look at this Hazel card. It's a hazard. Pretty dangerous. And now I'm going to have to discard one of these two cards to, um, gosh, I'm going to keep my Levitator Belt because being able to move to any location is incredibly powerful. While I still like having these fight symbols, I don't know if I'm going to get any next round. So I'm discarding this, not to my pile, forever. And I'm gonna move Space Boy to the same location as Rumor so that Rumor can play this card. Play this card at another hero's location to place a battle token of your choice. I heard a rumor. Rumor is whispering into Space Boy's ear. So Rumor's gonna take any battle token that they want, and in this case, it's definitely a wits, and they're gonna place it down on that card, and that finishes this particular card. So let's look at that hazard. We really prevented this. That effect would have been pretty devastating. I'm not sure it would have been that great. Um, take it off, pop it at the bottom of the deck. This is <laughs> unfortunate, but this might come up again. That's just the problem with Hazel and Cha-Cha. Okay, that was Rumor's turn. Now, this is where we probably should stop for Space Boy. Space Boy gets to keep this Levitator Belt by passing, um, and it won't count towards his hand limit. So I think we're just gonna say Space Boy is passing. Space Boy says pass. I'll just turn this sideways so I know that, I remember it. Now, if I want to discard this card so I can draw something else, I could also do the power. And you know what? I think I might. Um, and I think I might discard the white lie as well. The white lie doesn't help me right now. There's no hazard at the location. And because we defeated it together, that was better than just putting it off for later. So I think I'm just gonna discard the white lie as a rumor. Um, because of Rumor, um, and then because it comes back, there's pass, right, Space Boy's out of it, Rumor's gonna play the last card from his hand, and it says when the card is discarded, discard the top card of your deck. Yes, I knew it, oh, I knew it was about time. Oh, so good. Okay, let me tell you why I'm so excited. <laughs> this was a gamble, it was a gamble, but I told you that every player has two feud cards dealt into their hand, this card came up, and that's one of the cool ways you can discard cards is by doing what I just did. So that means that I kind of like escaped that particular feud card, um, and, and it's really, really cool. I like that. Um, so now I've got nothing out here to play. My players are still here in this seven location. That's gonna be the end of the play, uh, play phase. So now we're going to go back uh, to the next stage, which is draw. Every player is going to draw based on their hand limit. So I've got four cards here. Maybe not. Maybe Rumor drew too many cards this turn. 
Four means I need to shuffle up these cards and deal one out. So I might get unlucky when it comes to drawing a rumor back, or not a rumor, um, a feud card. Oh boy, okay, so shuffle, 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 put that down, and then here's the fifth card. My advantage card doesn't count for Space Boy. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like um, Space Boy still has some stuff. Oh, he's got a feud with Rumor. What a turkey. Can you believe that? We're going to have to take a look at that feud with Rumor. And we'll have to take a look at, yeah, I got sibling rivalry again for Rumor. That's okay. Drew my cards back up to five. Um, next thing is the effect phase. I'm going to go around the board starting at one, and I'm going to take a look at the effect on hazards that did not get cleared. They did not get defeated. And this is the point where if there were tokens on any of these villains or hazards and they weren't completely full, I clear them. So progress does not stay from round to round. So I'm going to look, 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 look here, and we get to effect. If Hazel and Cha-Cha are in the same location, devastate it and discard this card. Fortunately, they're not. Devastate is this card. This is a pretty, pretty rough card. The location is devastated, and it means that you cannot remove or destroy it, and it counts as one of your hazards for the rest of the game. If you have six or more hazards visible, game over, and that's at the end of that player round. This can't be fixed. It is devastated forever. So if they are in the same location, this could be a really, really bad card for me to trigger during the effect phase. But right now, we're fine. Uh, move, move. Um, ally in Trouble. This one says, when this hazard card is uh, drawn, draw a random ally card from the ally deck. Oh, shoot. This should have happened at the very beginning. Oh, no. Oh, no. I should have looked at that at the start. If this hazard is destroyed by the heroes, place that ally token in this location. Effect. Destroy this hazard without placing an ally. Okay. So we had an ally opportunity. That's what this deck right here is, the allies. Oh, it would have been Space Boy. Um, and it says if Space Boy is being played, discard this and draw a new card. So let me see. Oh, that was Rumor. Okay, let me see. Aha, Seance. So here's what's going to happen. We are going to walk through in our mind. This should have been played because it says draw a random ally card. Um, and if it's destroyed, we get to play the ally token. Well, the ally token is really cool, but the effect was destroy the hazard without placing an ally. So we essentially lost an opportunity. Here's what this ally card looks like. Um, uh, advantage cards in Seance's location can be picked up by any hero. Then you move Seance to a random location. Roll the die for a random location. Um, uh, as an action, a player may discard an advantage in Seance's location to move him to any other location. Mm, that would have been a really cool opportunity. But we're going to destroy this hazard without uh, placing an ally. So, whoops. This goes in the pile for destroy, and we're going to put Seance at the bottom of the deck. And that was just a missed opportunity by yours truly. Whoops. And you know what? Even if I had said, I don't want to go after the ally, I don't want to do that, it's just a lot of effort, I ended up doing a whole lot of really cool stuff here, that same effect would have happened, and I would have lost the ally, and it wouldn't have been any different at this point in the game. So, just make sure you read those cards if they have an effect when you place them out because that's what's going to happen right now. Now we're moving on to the crisis phase. I'm going to draw cards from this deck right here and I'm going to play them out starting at one. This is a hazard. A hazard goes down in a place where there is no hazard. I'm going to move on to two. That's an advantage card. Not too bad. I'm going to move on. Oh, there is a meteor that is now challenging the integrity of the Huxley County General Hospital, which is bad. I'm going to turn a card over. It is an effort card. So now I have Cha-Cha in this spot. I've got Red Licorice and Armageddon Hazard, and I have an Advantage card. So I'm going to put the Advantage card underneath. I'm not allowed to take advantages if there are hazards. 
Move on to the city, ally in trouble. Ha! Huh. When this hazard is drawn, draw a random ally card from the deck. If this hazard is destroyed by the heroes, place that ally token in this location. So we could possibly get number five. I'm gonna scooch that up a titch. We could get number five as an ally right here. If I go here and defeat this particular hazard and we can get it right this time. I'm gonna flip this card over, add it to six. I'm gonna flip over the next card, save the world. I got to that third stack of cards. All right, I'm gonna put this card down here. Now, let me show you. Save the world says, flip this super villain card and discard this card. You are now in the finale. This is an effect card. This stays here until the end of this round in which that takes effect. I will flip the super villain card to the super villain finale side and everybody is up for grabs. I can go after Hazel, I can go after Cha-Cha, and we can essentially try to end the game with a win. I'm gonna flip over this next card. It is a weapon. Notice you can have multiple advantages in the same spot, but you can never have more than one uh, hazard. Deadly weapon, that's a really nice looking advantage. And then missile strike at the mansion. Wow, the meteor is challenging the hospital and the missile strike is headed towards the mansion. This sounds absolutely awful, <laughs> to be honest. Um, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is pass this player token up here to Rumor, and we are going to start the play phase yet again. Now, I think what I wanna do is, um, hang on, I'm gonna stop right now because what I did was I went through an entire first round of the game we got to see that we are going to trigger the save the world at the end of this round and head after Hazel and Cha-Cha. You got to check out how movement works. You know how to use your cards. You know how to manage those um, feud cards and all the really cool stuff that this game offers, right? There are really great board abilities and these cool special advantage cards that just make every turn feel like you are doing a little bit and then you're doing more and then you're doing even more than you thought you could. And because you're working together, because it's cooperative, you really play off of each other's skills and abilities in a way that like you just can't see, you just can't foresee sometimes. I mean, when I played with Lewis, we just really surprised each other and I found that it was incredibly dynamic. Let's just do a quick count. I've got one, two, three, four, yet again, five hazards showing. Now I don't have the risk at this time of triggering the way the game ends if you have six or more hazards showing. That's good because I really wanna trigger the end of the world, uh, save the world, not the end of the world. <laughs> Hopefully it's not the end of the world. Um, so I can go after Hazel and Cha-Cha. So let me show you these villains one last time so you can understand that you go after them. You want to discard a Wits uh, token. You want to place a Fight token and another Fight token. And then back on the back side, um, you can take Wounds if you enter locations. Um, if Hazel enters a location with the hero. Um, wow, I mean, like, this stuff gets really, really intense. And as you can tell, <laughs> um, as you can tell, let me, let me show you this. Wound cards can be pretty rough. Wound cards, clog up your deck. They really just make it super, super hard for you to mobilize and for you to discard cards to move and discard cards to do all the cool card actions that you have. But we have number five as a potential ally and I'm really excited to see what happens if I can save the mansion, if I can save the hospital, and of course if uh, Space Boy and Rumor can work together to save the world defeating Hazel and Cha-Cha. Thank you so much for joining me for this run through of the Umbrella Academy, the board game. I will see you next time. Bye. If you'd like to hear my final thoughts about it, you can hit that I in the top right corner or click the link in the show notes below in five, four, three, two, one.